Hey friends, Julie here. I am a bicycle traveler and today I wanted to share how my bike touring and bikepacking gear list has changed. I headed off on my first bike tour ever nearly four years ago and I spent about three and a half months cycling solo across Europe from Scotland to Croatia. At the end of that tour, I made a video about my packing list, which I will link below. But because that was my first tour, I improvised a lot. I used a lot of what I had, I borrowed or bought secondhand, but I didn't. And there were a few things that I researched and had to buy outright. But overall, it was pretty cobbled together. I still actually use that list. Before every tour, I look over that gear list as a starting point. But there are some ways that I have changed and upgraded my gear list some of which are pretty big and have a really significant impact on my day-to-day -day riding. So I wanted to share those with you today. I still very much believe in going with what you have to just get out there and have the adventure. But if you're looking for a particular product or to make an upgrade, you might get some little ideas today. I will leave links to everything I mentioned today below. And if you want a full review video about any of the items I mentioned, definitely let me know in the comments below because if there are enough people interested in a full review video, I am happy to do that. All right, let's get going. Number one is my bags. When I started off bike touring, I got a set of Vode Aqua Bath panniers that I think were 25 liters each, so 50 liters total. Those sat on my rear rack and then I had a dry sack that went on top of that with all of my food. I got by with this setup, but because it made me so back heavy, paired with the type of bike I was on, meant that I felt really unstable on any kind of even slightly rough terrain. So after that first tour, I slowly worked away at spreading out the weight. I now have two 20 liter rear panniers from Ortlieb, along with two 4.1 liter fork bags from Ortlieb that sit on my fork, and an eight liter handlebar bag from Ortlieb. Ortlieb has a five year waterproof guarantee and so far all of their products have done very well for me. Spreading out the weight over my bike like this and switching to a bike that has a more stable geometry has helped me feel a lot more comfortable on a variety of terrains, which is pretty key for me because I'd like to move more and more towards off-road routes. Number two is my tent. On my first tour, I headed off with a very old leaky tent, which halfway through my tour, I replaced with the MSR Elixir 2, which I found served me very well for my solo tours. But last year, my partner Michael invested in this. It is the Big Agnes Copper Sur HV3 UL Bike Pack. <laughs> it's wordy but it's a great tent. <laughs> it is designed to be very lightweight and compact for bike packing. So even the poles fold down smaller than your average tent poles. We got the three person because then we have enough space for our gear to be in the tent as well. We find it to be spacious enough for two people. So far it has been completely waterproof. And as you can see, it rolls up pretty small for a tent. Number three is my raincoat. I am so crabby if I I am wet and cold, so my raincoat is absolutely key. I used this mech raincoat for many, many years, but eventually it delaminated and it's so old that they don't make it anymore. So I turned to Facebook and Reddit to see what other bike tourers and bike packers were using, and I kept hearing over and over again, showers pass. So I reached out to Showers Pass and they were kind enough to send me this Ecolite Elite to try out and see what I thought. I have taken it on two rainy rides so far, a 45 minute one and a 30 minute one, and it performed really well. Not a drop of water passed through the raincoat. I also really like the bright color and the high-vis strips on it because of how dark and dreary it can be when it rains. And I like that it has a breast pocket and a back pocket rather than the typical side pocket that I'm more likely to get water on my hands and gloves into those pockets. And I like that it has a deep hood to kind of protect my face from the rain. So I still need to take it on some longer rides to see how it performs in all day rain. But so far I am really loving this jacket and I will keep you posted on how it performs on my next tour. Number four is my coffee preparation method. I don't know about you, but I feel like a morning coffee is a pretty integral part of a bike tour. There's something so comforting about starting the day, no matter where you are in the world, with a hot cup of coffee. On my first tour, I just used 
what's it called? Dehydrated coffee? Instant coffee, instant coffee. I used instant coffee because it was simple and because I didn't know there was any other way you could do it on tour. But then I discovered AeroPress. You basically shove water with the pressure and power of air through the coffee and it makes a really great cup of coffee. And they make a travel version which packs up quite small and doesn't really take up that much more space than a jar of instant coffee. And it tastes so much better. So maybe it adds a little bit of weight, but it's totally worth it. Number five is my shoe covers. Again, because I hate being cold and wet. On my first tour, a family member was kind enough to lend me booties made of, I think it's neoprene. It's that kind of wetsuit material. And even though they were very good at keeping my feet warm, I found for one, they were kind of frustrating to pull on and off, which meant if I was in a kind of like on off rain situation, I got kind of lazy about putting them on, which is my own fault, but then my feet would get wet. So, <laughs> To account for my own laziness, I moved over to shoe covers and waterproof socks. The waterproof socks do the heavy lifting of keeping the actual water out of my feet. And then the shoe covers kind of, I think, help to keep my feet a little bit warmer and they do shed off some of the rain. So if it only rains for 20 or 30 minutes, they'll keep my shoes pretty dry. After that, water ends up getting in, especially from underneath, from water splashing up below, but that's where the waterproof socks work their magic to keep my feet warm and dry. Now this setup isn't ideal for hot situations. For instance, last year when I was in Southeast Asia, it was just too hot to use this setup. But for any kind of cooler temperatures, this is really great to keep my feet warm and dry. And number six is my flat fix kit. And that's because I run tubeless now. If you aren't familiar with tubeless, I'll give you a quick overview. Anything longer is probably the subject of a whole other video. Basically, instead of having a tube inside your tire, you have this liquid sealant. And when your tire gets a puncture, this sealant kind of oozes into the hole and gets sticky and basically plugs the hole. As an example, when we were in Turkey, all of a sudden my partner Michael's tire started spewing sealant because it had been punctured. But after about three or four seconds, that sealant plugged the hole. We stopped for maybe 30 seconds to make sure that it was plugged. And then we were able to continue on. If we had been running with tubes, the tube would have been punctured and we would have had to stop to patch or replace it. I know when I first heard about tubeless, I was like, no way am I using that on tour. That is way too complicated. How am I ever gonna find the things I need if something goes wrong? But I have since converted and now I travel with a bit of extra sealant in case, plugs in case the hole in the tire is too big for the sealant to fill and the actual hole needs to be plugged. And a couple of spare tubes as a backup in case something goes wrong with the tubeless, you can always go back to tubes. I feel like tubeless is a bit of a controversial one, so if you want a whole video on that, definitely let me know in the comments below. Okay, those are six things that have changed since my first bike tour across Europe, and I felt like it was the perfect time to share them with you because I'm actually heading back to Europe on my next bike tour. In May, we are going to be cycling from Switzerland through France to Spain, and I'll be using all of this gear to keep me going. If you enjoy this video and you get value from my videos, consider joining me over on Patreon. Your support helps me to keep making videos and in return you get things like access to exclusive videos, photos, behind the scene updates, and more. Thanks for being here. See you in the next one. Bye!